y'all. Welcome to Deliberately Creative. I'm Stephanie and today I'm going to do something a little different. I am not going to edit this video. So whatever happens, happens. I was going to do this as a live, but I just didn't get it scheduled and you know, things happen. Anyhow, I want to do another version of this particular candle. I did this one in colored pencil. I used the Derwent Color Soft colored pencils on this one, but it was on a piece of pretty cheap black uh, sulfite paper, drawing paper, and I wanted to do it again with my Prismacolor colored pencils and some of the black Stonehenge watercolor paper. I am really looking forward to seeing how this goes. The other paper was a little bit less satisfactory. It worked. It, it turned out it's pretty and I could t glue this down onto a card just like that and send it off. So I'll probably be doing that, but I want to try again because these colors look pretty in the distance, but up close, they look a little rough. So. We're going to get started here. I am going to quickly just grab a piece of black watercolor paper. This is the Stonehenge 100% cotton watercolor paper, black. And it's kind of like, what do you do with black watercolor paper? Well, you can use gouache on it like nobody's business. And I'm going to try out doing colored pencil on it. It doesn't matter which side. I think I'm going to go for the slightly smoother side. And I will take a white charcoal pencil. There we go. White charcoal pencil. This is the generals. And I'm going to just give myself a general. Here's where the flame is. There's where the wick is. The flame is above the actual candle on this particular view that I'm looking at. If you're interested, I have a whole bunch of pictures on my Unsplash collections that if you want to check it out, click the link down below. This has a fairly even light. It goes from being brightest up here at the top and floats down and becomes darker and darker where it just disappears at the bottom. I want to go ahead and get my white in here. The white does not fill all the way down at the bottom. Now I did that on this one. I took the white down way too far and then I had to do some playing to make it work. So I'm going to take this. The white sort of is in an arc over the wick and I am not going to press hard right now. I just want to get some color on part of doing this with the Prisma colors is that they are a bit more opaque and I should be able to get a lovely smooth finish when I'm done. There is this sort of bright electric blue almost at the bottom. What blue? I chose true blue. The bottom of the flame. And it's just a little bit of that blue. Then I am going to grab kind of a ultramarine blue. Bring it in a little bit darker, closer to the wick. But it's still just enough of that blue to make it look like there's blue there. I need to move these other pencils out of the way because I want to just keep the pencils that I'm using out here. I think I'm going to go ahead and grab the, this is the goldenrod. I'm going to put a bit of that in here. See, I'm just working this up towards the flame. The, the hottest, very, very hottest part of this is right down next to that wick. That's where that blue is. I'm going to bring a little bit more of that blue right out here. And 
And then we are going to grab a soft yellowy color. This is the uh, yellow ochre. And I am going to put yellow ochre on the top of the candle. I am coloring in little circles. I am not pressing hard. That's why I'm kind of backed off on the pencil here and keeping my hand back. Since these pencils are fairly delicate, uh, this one actually is one of the old barrel Prismacolor pencils, but, and they tend, the barrel pencils tended to be a little bit stronger. Most of my colored pencils that I have here though are the new uh, premieres, and those are definitely more delicate. The color is gonna be worked down in a gradient. So this is my lightest up here at the top. I will bring some white over everything in a moment. Actually, I think I'll take that color down so when I add my next color on top of it, it really does blend. There we go. I don't want to take this color all the way down to the bottom though. My next color is going to be the poppy red lightly over that yellow ochre. And what that's going to do is blend. One of the things Prismacolors do really, really well is blend. So I'm blending these colors together. The action of drawing or coloring over it warms up the surface a little bit. The colors start mingling together. I'm gonna take that down now. So I just did over that section of yellow ochre with the poppy. Now I'm taking it down and if you see, because I don't have that lighter color underneath, it's getting darker as we go down. Isn't that cool? And you saw how easy it was to just lay out the basic shape of a candle. It's not hard not hard at all. I am going to grab, this is the permanent red. I'm going to take some of that in here just to darken this up just a little bit more. And I'm going to do something a little bit weird. I'm going to take this blue indigo color and use it as my bridge between the black and the red. To bring in that shadow and have it feel like it's pulling up into the candle a little bit. So see that? And I'm even gonna bring a little bit of that up around the edges. I, f I feel like this area right here where the yellow ochre was and that orangey color isn't blended quite enough. I really want this to feel gradient and not slices. So I'm bringing my yellow ochre back on and I'm adding a bit more color. These pencils, because they are wax, do get that uh, wax haze and you can take a tissue and buff it to kind of work that wax haze off. I am going to grab the white now, right after I do this. Grab that white. I wanna put a touch of this white right along the edge right here. And I'm going to pull a bit of a shine just take that white to bring the shine in, dragging it down, doing a waxy candle with waxy pencils is kind of fun. 
And now I can take my yellow ochre again, smooth that out. I'm going to use the yellow ochre as a bit of a side highlight because it's not my brightest like that now looking at that this is this is getting really pretty I want to take a bit of the indigo indigo is a blue it's not black so it does look different than the paper putting a little bit of that right along the edge there might be a little bit of color showing that's pretty cool put a bit of that indigo right up here in to that flame and there's some little sparks right next to the wick there we go and now I want to bring a slightly brighter yellow or brighter yellowy orange. This is yellow orange. Into that flame. And just a bit of it outside. I'm kind of letting it glow, but not too, not too much. I'm not gonna make this a really big a really big glowy area here in the reference photo it's not a very big glowy area I am gonna try and see if I can blend out that oh look at that you can blend out your colored pencil this is a blending stump it's a rolled paper stump but it is the firm kind not the little uh, tor tortillons or t tortillions I'm not sure how that's pronounced. If you know how it's pronounced, let me know. I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to kind of fuzz out or soften some of that white. There we go. Oh, that's pretty. I think maybe I'll take it down here and buff this just a little bit. This is burnishing now. This is sort of polishing those colors together. And up here, it's just sort of diffusing it because there's hardly any pencil. I do want my flame to become much more enhanced, much more brilliant. I want it to glow. So I'm going to put more white I'm trying to keep it very smooth though, how I'm putting my white on. And there's a tiny touch of sort of a reddish color up here at the tip and even down into that glow on the sides, just a little. <laughs> to finish this one off, I want to put some of those cute little bokeh lights around it. I thought that turned out really pretty. The easiest way to do it is to grab yourself a circle template. And I'm going to take colors that I used in the candle. And those are going to be colors that are in the lights that are giving us that bokeh glow. By keeping the template down, I can keep my circles very, very Good. Don't press hard. You want these to actually show some of that uh, black paper through it. And they don't have to all stay the same size. I might try to keep them the same size. But this is the fun little bit. You, you can put as many bokeh lights in as you want. I hope you enjoyed this stick around for a couple seconds here still because we're gonna finish it off with putting it onto a card let's see I'm just 
looking here going, what colors, what colors? I'm actually going to pull the blue light in. See how these Prismacolors just show up so nicely on top of the black paper. Let's see, we're gonna put a white light in here. It's very effective and you really don't have to put a ton of them on. I think another white one is gonna be bouncing up over here. And if you feel like you're getting, you like you don't have enough, you can keep going. If you feel like five is plenty, you can stop with five. Let's see, I think I still want kind of a red light on here. You know, these are all the glows of different lights. The, the bokeh effect is just the blurring out of different lights and look at this I'm bumping this one right up against another one oh that's pretty maybe we'll have a, a red light up over here by the by the blue also I say red this is the poppy red so it's kind of an orangey red it's a very warm red All right. Oh, that is so, so pretty. Very simple, very easy. You can do it. Oh, I love it. It does look like it's glowing. And I hope that you enjoyed this quick little lesson. Please make sure to click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and let me know if you like these straight through, kind of like they were live, but without any of the interruptions from a live stream. And I want to hear what you think. I'm probably going to post this as a premiere so we can chat. <laughs> I hope that you go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I want to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.